Howdy there, folks. This is Lapidary Dave. And right now, I want to show you folks what I do lapidary-wise with glass grinders. This glass grinder is a Griffette. I think that's how you say it. Diamond Grinder by Griffin Corporation. This thing is very small. It's about like like six by five. And it came with this diamond barrel. It uses a Allen key to a to tighten the barrel to the arbor of the glass grinder. Perhaps like this. Or upside down like that. It's probably good to flip it every once in a while, much like a lapidary wheel. Shortly after purchasing this machine, which came with that, I bought this bit. This bit is almost like a blade. It's not centered, it was cheap, maybe two or three dollars. I'm not a hundred percent sure where I bought this bit from, but I enjoy it a bunch. Alright. This machine uses a stamp sponge um, behind the bit or burr to keep it moist. That's interesting. It's not really my style. I like a little bit more water on my piece. So I make sure to wedge the sponge up in there and then I have a drip um, constantly dripping onto the sponge. And it works very well for me. Folks use these machines in the stained glass world a lot to um, push their pieces on this flat surface against the diamond wheels, perhaps to make them flatter, to then solder them using their solders for their stained glass art. That's one application for this machine, um, kind of the only other one I know besides what I'm about to do. You can grind a little bit using this wheel. It is diamond, and it will eat up gemstones, but I don't really recommend it. I think I would be a little bit more successful using like a Dremel or a Flex Shaft with a burr, um, opposed to using a glass grinder drum. This machine was about a hundred bucks, and I only used it one time, and that was to prep um, a stone for this video. Um, I'm going to show you folks how I use this machine to put a groove around gemstones, so that I can then just lay a wire in it, and um, just twist up a quick bale and be done with my wire wraps. Anybody who knows me knows I'm not a good wire wrapper and I really appreciate the art and this is kind of my solution to not being the best. Don't get me wrong, I still have to make the bale at the top which is just as hard as any other thing in wire wrapping but it really does help and I wanted to make this video to show you folks how I groove stones. I will be grooving this piece of adventuring. I don't have any more wire laying around to um, wrap that, but I did mill out this little piece of silver. I feel like it's just a little too thin for this um, blade on this uh, glass grinder, but it, it'll get the point across. This is actually like 80% silver. A lot tougher than sterling. This machine came with an extra sponge. It's a lot smaller than the other one. Interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do to show you folks how I groove is I'm going to guesstimate the height of the groove I would like around the stone. And I do this by holding my stone against the burr that's going to be doing the grooving, and then roughly using my eye to adjust the burr 
to where I think it's going to be, and then I tighten it. It doesn't have to be 100%, but if it is off, it will kind of govern front or back of the piece. Another thing that's interesting is you can groove the stone and then lay the wire in the groove and then lap the stone with the silver, copper, or gold wrapped around the stone, and it makes it look flush against the stone, and it's very interesting. I don't have a thick enough wire to do that for you folks. You kind of need a wire a little bit thicker than the groove, but that's something pretty cool that you can do. Um, with wire grooved in your stones in the lapidary world. Sometimes, especially when I'm um, hitting pieces that are cabbed, I will switch to this drum grinder and I will move the stone around the diamonds so that I flatten out the edge of the cab if it's completely um, sloped. This way, when I switch back to the blade, it has a good surface to bite onto. All right. So after I set the blade to the height I think I'm going to want to grind it to, I always um, take a scrap piece of stone and I lay it against there and I test it. This way I can look at the groove afterwards and know it's the height I want it to. Sometimes I'll even compare it to the stone or whatnot. It can be a little misleading. But uh, yes, so I'm going to get this bad girl started. I'm going to test using this beautiful piece of smoky quartz from Cuesta, New Mexico. After that, I will be grooving. All right, one more thing I forgot to mention. You have to be very careful when you're grooving around a stone when there's a point. That's because if you grind too deep, um, which is very easy to do on the point, the stone will sit inside that groove really deep and it can kind of look unappealing. So when I am grinding a stone that is pointed, and I, I um, make sure to be extra careful towards that point and to not over grind right here because I can ruin a piece or just really make it look ugly. So yes, grinding too deep is definitely a problem. Unless you're trying to hide the wire, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, let's let's get to it. Okay, we are roughly adjusted. I got my sponge in there like I want it. I like it extra juicy. I'm using this two and a half gallon watering container to drip on top of this bad girl. I have my scrap piece here. I just need to mark one little spot. All right, let's do it. I don't need a stream or anything, just a steady drip to keep the sponge moist. Something like that is just fine. This little guy is not very variable speed, but it's pretty um pretty tough. Pretty brand new blade. <sighs> and just like that, you can see it grouped. Fantastic. That was quick. So now, I'm going to do a little comparing to my stone to make sure that's roughly where I would want it to be. Alright. And now I'm going to be careful not to um, grind too deep. It's not too hard not to. But I have done it in the past. On the angles, I make sure to do it smoothly and quickly. Okay. 
so folks often ask me, how do I make sure not to grind too deep? Or how do I make sure to consistently grind the stone to a uniform depth? And really, there is no trick to what I'm doing here besides just taking it easy and looking and feeling. But I have seen folks set up wooden guides to create a uniform depth, like, um, like a piece of wood to keep the stone from being able to push up against the blade any more than necessary. Sorry, I don't have any links to those videos or pictures. Look up grooving, grooving stones on, like, Google Images and stuff. Alright, folks, I hope this is a slightly better angle. Just realized probably couldn't see much. Being careful not to push too close. I should have a piece of wire here so that I can hold it up against there to check the uniformity on the depth. But it's okay. I just wanted you folks to be able to see really quick what I'm doing here. And that is grooving around this beautiful piece of adventuring. All right. Pretty much done. Fantastic. Folks, I also forgot to mention that everything I did with this can easily be done with diamond files and rotary tool or dremel bit tools, flex shaft burrs, diamond, diamond tools. I just like how uniform I get the groove around the stone using this method. Alright folks, here's that beautifully grooved stone. Those black spots are like a sharpie. Pretty consistent. A few things that I should have mentioned. Um, it's pretty good to have your wire on hand when you're doing the grinding. This way you can kind of lay it in the stone to further determine how deep you need to go or how shallow you're going to want to leave it. Another thing, um, don't be discouraged if you mess up because you can always grind it um, and kind of cab it to fix the groove. Another thing, you're going to want to maybe do this grooving at rougher grits. Um, you're not going to want to probably do this to something that's rocking at around 20 or 50,000 grit. What little bit of blowout does happen from this burr is enough to be seen from the side of the stone if you're not paying attention. And it's dramatic enough. But that's that. Please excuse me, I'm not going to attempt to make a, um, a bail with this. I'd rather not waste the silver. I'm no good at wire wrapping. I can just leave that to the professionals. I milled this a little thin, and it's kind of square, but it's really nice. And I think I would like to work this a little bit more before I have it professionally wrapped in the case that the bale gets in the way of my lapidary machines. Because it looks like there's either gold or pyrite in this beautiful New Mexican... Adventuring. I'm not sure where this is from. I bought it from an old timer, but fantastic. Anyway, folks, this is Lapidary Dave. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you folks become fantastic Y rappers because I'm no good and it is a beautiful art. Anyway, this is Lapidary Dave messing around with. Glass grinders. A little bit of lapidary fun. Love y'all. See you soon.